OK, um, so I'm, I'm going to run you through um, what we've come up with as some suggestions for the objectives that we should, should address as part of the field lab. And <laughs> so, yeah, sorry, uh, look at um, um, some ideas for potential assessments as well and um, best practice for you know for the trial design and um, you know really ideally we would be in the same room discussing this so um, just to bear in mind you know these are our suggestions and we really need to get your inputs on what your motivations are what your priorities are and what what you think you can contribute to to the field lab move to the next slide okay um so um these are these graphs show the results of the survey that we asked you to fill in uh, when um when, when registering for the events and um, i just thought it'd be nice to show um you know who some of the people that are on the call so the majority of um and you guys are farmers and estate managers so that's great because you're you know you're working on the farm um, and um, we also asked you to select what your motivation is for joining um, and the, the really and um, the top three were really the priority was to um, what species to grow and what is the grazing value of those species um, followed by um, uh, impacts on soil structure and then also um, nitrogen supply and um, impacts on the following crop. Um, this slide just uh, recaps what Anne, Anne showed and um, of the majority of the participants, you, you are already growing crops, uh, cover crops, sorry. And um, again, the majority are, of you are using um, sheep to graze them. So really, you know, there is a lot of expertise already in the field lab that we can, you know, we can build upon. And, um, you know, as Anne's been showing through her background presentation, the performance of the cover crop will really vary um, with, you know, so different soils textures. Um, and that would, you know, and also the different soils that you'll be on um, will be um, impacted differently by, you know, the, 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 by the grazing, so any compaction will vary between different soils types. So it's nice to see that of you know of the farms that we cover a nice range of different soil textures, with um, medium and light soils being dominant. And I think you know just showing this is I've done this just so that you can see um, what we need to bear in mind when we design the field lab, and that um, when we decide the location of the field labs, we need to pick something that's going to be um, most applicable to um, you know most of the part most of the farms um, in terms of typical rotations so we have um, quite a different range of rotations we have either just straight cereals or cereals of all seed rape or sugar beets and then a number of you also have um, veg or grass lays so really, you know, together we have a, a nice opportunity to set up a field lab that will cover these different soil textures, but also different rotations. OK, um, I'm just I'm going to go back to basics on, on designing the trial and and forgive me for doing this, but I think it's a way of well, it's a way of structuring the presentation and it's a way of getting us to think methodically about how we want to go about designing the field lab and and really first off we need to have a clear and simple objective or objectives that we want the field lab to um, address um, so that will be the first stage to identify those objectives and they can be based on the, you know, the knowledge gaps that Anne has identified. Um, and then we really need to decide on the treatment, which in this case is going to be grazing. Um, so, um, and it's important that when we're designing the trial and we're comparing treatments that we only change one thing. So really we want a grazed and ungrazed treatment to compare. 
Um, and between those two treatments, we need to make sure that the cover crop is the same species. Um, in terms of a control, um, we need to make sure that we have the most appropriate comparisons. So if we have a grazing treatment, we'll have the non-grazed, a grazing cover crop treatment, we'll then have the non-grazed cover crop treatment to compare it to. But we also uh, think we need to have a, a winter stubble and that way we can sort of build the story. We can compare the impact that the cover crop to the stubble has on yields and soil structure, but then also compare the cover crop with and without grazing. And this is important. This is really important because it'll help us just to tease out the, the you know, the impacts that the grazing is having on, 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 the, uh, on whatever we're measuring really. Um, I'm going to talk about field choice as well. And um, there's quite a bit to consider with this. Um, and really the emphasis is that we need to have the trials um, or we should take in place in a single field. And it, it does make it really complicated with it being a livestock trial. But this is um, very important as we know um, things like field history and, and soil texture are all going to influence the um, things like soil structure or yield. So to, have to be able to collect robust data and to be confident that what we're measuring, any differences that we're measuring are due to the treatment, we need it to take place in a single field. And then finally, I'll give an example of the assessments that we can um, carry out to address each of the objectives that we want to um, look at. And really the main point of this is that you can pick and choose um, what assessments you want to do if you decide to run a trial. Um, but the main point will be that we'll follow the same methods or the same protocol so that all the data is collected following the same methodology and it produces this nice robust data set that we can um, share amongst the, everyone in the field lab. Just move on to the next one. There we go. OK, so um, I'm just really this is recapping the objectives that um, we've initially identified as being important. And again, they are focusing on the environmental impacts of grazing cover crops and impacts on the on the following crop. And they've they've come about from the knowledge gaps that Anne has presented and explained. So it's the grazing value of the cover crops, so impacts on soil structure, impacts on nitrogen supply. We've seen a difference in nitrogen supply once the cover crop has passed through the, the sheep. Uh, what's the impacts on the cost benefit? And um, you know, to share amongst the group what infrastructure is required to, to, um, to have sheep grazing the cover crops. Um, yeah, and so if I just take a bit of time to talk about field choice, I mean, you know, if you decide to have to carry out one of the trials, um, we can, we'll go into this in more detail. But the purpose of talk, you know, touching on this is really to give you an idea of um, what, what we're sort of anticipating and give you an idea of uh, what the trial will involve for you in terms of your commitment and your effort. Um, really, when we're picking fields, we obviously, you know, if you can find a field that's even in terms of its of its soil variability and cropping, and how the you know the yield crop performs, this will give us more precise results when we're comparing the impacts of treatments. And to pick um, a, a field that is more even, we we're going to look at things like the field history, and I expect we'll say that we don't want the trial to be carried out in a field that has just come out of grass um, or we don't want to have a trial that it's just has been grazed the previous year because that will have a ver that, that will have an impact on the variability and soil and action supply across the site. We can use there's lots of different tools that we can use to look at um, the variability of the field you know the Google Earth is fantastic just to see where there's things like former split fields um, the, uh, 
data farming, we can use that. Once you give us the, you know, the location of field, um, we can look at the changes in NDVI of the season. And you know, if you have it, nutrient maps, they can also be used. And that all can be used to say, you know, is the field suitable and how should we orientate the treatments? And we'll, we'll help you with that when we when we get down the to that road. OK, um, so this is me sitting at home and based on my experience of how, you know, we run trials and get good you know, have robust data for uh, yield results. This is our ideal of how we would like a grazing cover crop trial design. And, and really I've, I've laid this out so that we can get a discussion going on from you to hear how practical you think this will be. Um, so in the middle, in the blue strip, this, we, this is where, you know, we'd have ideally like to have the cover crop that is grazed. And then either side, we'd like to have a cover crop that isn't grazed. And the reason that we, you know, we go for this approach is um, if we were to um, analyze the, the map using, um, say, the um, spring crop yields using yield mapping and analyze it using ADAS's um, sort of agronomics package, this is this approach gives us the most um, statistical power to be able to pick up differences in the yield. And as I mentioned, we would ideally like to have, you know, a small area of the stubble, winter stubble control, so that again you can pick out the, you know, the impacts of stubble compared to cover crop, and then again add another layer on the impact of the grazing. Um, and finally, you know, just to say that, you know, obviously this is a complicated, you know, trial design. We, we appreciate that, but it does give a lot more statistical power, a lot more robust data than say doing a split field design where um, the results that you get are largely, you know, in our experience can be masked by the variability that's inherent in the field. But we do have to consider the practical implications of having you know, a trial that involves livestock. I mean, for instance, I've just, flagged up on here, you know, wherever your gate is, you know, um, you're going to have to maybe have a discard area. So you've got an area where you can pass back and forth if you need to, to access the, the cover, uh, get access the sheep and, and provide them with, um, um, you know, any water that they need. Um, so obviously the, from this area, you wouldn't take any, any, um, any uh, measurements. Also, I guess, you know, if you have run back areas of grass for the sheep, that would have to be factored in in how you would you know, lay out the design. But, you know, we could talk you through and, and work this out together, really. That's that's the main message. Um, I've um, just made a quick diagram to sort of explain how we could structure the field lab. And really, these are our initial thoughts of what we could do with the budget and what would provide the most robust data. So we can see that we can see a position that we'd have a single hub site where we carry out um, assessments to address all the objectives or most of the objectives that you um, think are, are the most important, say, either impacts on yield, um, grazing value of cover crops, soil structure, earthworms, um, etc. But and this hub site, as I've said, we think it's, you know, it's important that this site is as representative of as many farms in the field lab as possible. So maybe say take place on a medium textured soil. But to complement that, I think, you know, there is a lot of variability, as we've seen um, uh, between the farms um, uh, uh, in the field, you know, potentially a lot of variability. And it'd be nice to include a series of satellite sites. And with these satellite sites, we would say, you know, as a minimum, you'd have to carry out a trial design that's robust and we'd work you through that, measure the impacts on crop uh, spring crop yields, um, have good you know, management records, 
um, so that we can build up um, evidence for a cost benefit analysis. But then on top of that, anything else that you were interested in doing, you can pick and choose as suits you best, really. So if you were interested in just simply looking at soil structure, we can guide you on the methods to do that. But the main point being with the satellite sites, all the measurements will be carried out by you, the farmer, um, following standard methods, whereas at the hub sites, ADAS or ourselves can come along and we can take some extra measurements that um, wouldn't you know wouldn't be possible from the farm alone and the idea is that if we all follow the sort of the same or aim for the same aspirations on the trial design and we all follow the same methodologies then this together will fill the evidence for the field lab and I think you know our, our hope is that if we can you know get interest in the hub site you know there might be with a bit of extra funding and depending on uh, who's interested in uh, in the you know in the grazing cover crop field lab we could possibly add on a mesh uh, additional assessments there to meet other objectives if required so given uh, i hope i've explained that um sort of clear enough um and but maybe what i'll do now is i'll go through each of the objectives and just quickly summarise the types of assessments that we envisage carrying out and just highlight where you know you as farmers can carry that out yourself so which ones we'd think you can do if you so choose um so for the first objective so this is the grazing value of the cover crops um i've just summarised in this word cloud um some of the different species that have been um currently being used as cover crops um or grazed cover crops so these are even as a single species or in a mix so the most popular is vetch um we've got turnips oats and red clover they were the four most popular um and really we, we really want to understand um what the quality is of the different of the of the cover crops and you know we could maybe look at if the budget allows that some of the satellite sites taking some measurements such as dry matter and uh, metabolizable energy crew protein um we'd also you know we can see that it'd be possible for you know the farmers at each site to be able to look at the species composition so is what you drilled establishing you know what's the weedy growth in there and also look at what the cover crop utilization is um is it being you know how much has been um utilized by the sheep has only been trampled into the ground particularly if it's been mob grazed or is there evidence that you know actually the sheep aren't finding a particular species palatable um finally on this point of uh, cover crop types i think a key discussion point is and we've already touched on it is what cover crop species should we grow and as Anne has said, you know, really the, the first point is to look at what fits in with your rotation so we don't have those um, conflicts going on. But, you know, we need to decide is there a particular cover crop that you're interested in and um, is there value in trying to get um, several farms, trying to grow the same mix? You know, you can see that there'll be a quite interesting a, you know an interest in comparing whether the same mix across different sites can um, achieve those um, quality um, sort of the protein and the dry matter um, amounts that we need to 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 meet the what the the you know the requirements of the sheep and whether that differs um, and then, then there's you know interest in particular species like samphoy that's supposed to reduce bloat you know would you you know Basically, if this is a bit of a discussion that we've got to have and we need to be directed by you uh, whilst doing what's you know, feasible within the budget. Um, so if we look on to the objective of assessing what impact grazing the cover crops has on soil structure, um, there's again, there's a series of step assessments that we could carry out. There's the visual evaluation of soil structure. Um, 
this, um, which you know you really have to carry out when the soles are you know at field capacity so not too wet as it has been in most of all, uh, autumn last year not too dry like it has been most of spring this year but also you know lots of photos would be really useful um, you know evidence of poaching um, and then after a storm event you know if there's any evidence of runoff or erosion this stuff is really you know really useful to be able to collect if we count so uh, it would be quite easy to do we would just pick a, a standard method to follow like the AHDB method and then at the hub site you know we could add on additional measurements that are commonly taken like permetrometer resistance and bulk density so at the at the you know the satellite sites you know we can see that the the bears the photos and the earthworm counts could probably all be carried out by you the farmers and then we can share that evidence all together um, one of the things that, again, we've touched on already is what is the impact of the grazing on the soil structure? And as we've discussed, it's going to vary with um, um, soil texture, but also with um, stocking density and grazing length. And so that there, all those factors are going to be uh, interacting to, to see what the overall impact and whether is on the soil structure. So we want to look, you know, you can do the measurements during grazing and compare areas with and without graze, uh, grazing and look at the soil structure there. We can then measure the, the soil structure in the spring crop. And obviously there you'll have there, um, the impact of the different cultivations on whether the, there's any, um, uh, you know, de deterioration in soil structure persisting. And we could look even longer as well and basically try and answer this gap in the in the research as, as to whether you know any negative impacts on soil structure are, are you know sort of transient or whether they persist. Um, so north um, nitrogen supply and impacts on the following crop. Um, so um, I've, I've touched on this in how you know we, we would like the trial to be designed and, and we've talked about the yield mapping but in terms of um, the nitrogen supply as Anna's shown you know that's um, what's in the soil and what's in the above ground bi biomass so um, if that the graph on this slide just shows that and really we want to see if you know that um, you know passing the cover crop through the sheep if it's been eaten by the sheep is the nitrogen more readily available to the following crop or other nutrients more readily available to the following crop and what impact does that have on crop yields so the measurements we can take you know they'll be looking at the cover crop biomass and the nitrogen uptake of that cover crop measuring soil mineral nitrogen you can do that before and after the grazing we can measure crop yields and we can do that even through the yield mapping or um, if you don't have yield mapping on the satellite sites, we can uh, look at differences between the treatment areas by taking cuts from a way bridge. And um, we really see that to you know, the measurements that the farmers can, you know, you guys can make will really be um, potentially cover crop biomass to go along with a codrat and from a representative area and, and take a cut. If you have a yield mapping combine, we, we think we've costed up and we can analyse up to maybe four sites and run that through the ADAS agronomics package. And with the Waybridge, uh, again, we can look at the differences between the two. I mean, the main thing is, you know, if you're looking for, for the impacts on the crop yield, um, the cover crop has on the crop yield, just need to factor that in when making the trial design so that the, the plots are fit in with your machinery and that we can take a couple of harvest cuts from each treatment area. And finally, um, I've, I've merged this together. So this is um, what how we should manage the cover crop and the cost benefit analysis. And this, this is really down to, to you, the farmers, really. It's a record of your management um, so that we can build this cost benefit analysis. Um, but also it will be a bit of a trial diary as well, really, and, and um, to encourage you to take any observations that you think are important, you know, 
are you seeing that the conditions for drilling the spring crop differ between um, cover crop grazed or not, not grazed or with and without cover crops? Are you seeing a difference in the germination? Um, or And um, basically, just to summarise here, we can look at we'd like to have a record of all the inputs, you know, so like the cost of the cover crop seed. Um, I've mentioned this already, the cover crop utilisation. Is there any additional feed that you need to top up um, to meet the, the energy and protein requirements of the sheep? Have you used glyphosate, you know, and how much to, to destroy the cover crop? Or have you been able, you know, simply to let the sheep graze hard and you know, cultivate afterwards, has that been enough to kill off the cover crop? You know, this information is really important. And uh, livestock performance. So whilst the focus is really on the environmental um, impacts of uh, grazing cover crops, to build this cost benefit analysis, we want to take, um, collect some information about livestock performance. So what's the live weight gain? So maybe you can measure before and after grazing the cover crop. What's the stocking rate you've used? How long you've grazed for? Um, and then other things like body condition, scoring, you know, can you do that for us? <coughs> and finally, any other health issues? Have you seen some you know, bloat or something with um, certain species of the uh, cover crops? And, um, and then I think it'd be nice to share you know, your, the details of what infrastructure you use or what experiences so that we can share that with the broader group. 